So which thesis will win over the American voter? For more, we turn to Peter Morizzi, professor of economics at the University of Maryland. Peter, based on everything you know about the two agendas, Obama and Romney, which fella can deal effectively with tax -mageddons? Well, clearly the thing that needs to be done is to cut spending so we don't have to raise these taxes. Uh, federal spending is up almost a trillion dollars since 2007, but about 600 billion of that is additional spending. It wasn't needed for inflation, and we need to start slicing and slicing big. The government is taking in 50 percent more uh, than it spends. Excuse me, it's taking in 50 percent less than it spends, and you know this tax increase, you know, will close that gap a bit but it won't solve the problem, but it, what it will do is throw us in, into a Greek-style recession. The economy will immediately contract. What would have happened, uh, Peter Morici, if the Fed hadn't uh, gotten the printing press out regularly in the last few years? Well, the Fed served a useful purpose early in the financial crisis and even early in the recovery in lowering interest rates. But now, QE3, it's not much use. Uh, it does give the stock market a bit of a boost but it's probably boosting it more than it should. And when QE3 ultimately ends, we'll probably get an adjustment. All right, uh, need to ask you about uh, Romney. Uh, he was on uh, 60 Minutes, as you know, and he was asked uh, for specifics uh, because he's talking about uh, reducing taxes across the board, but says that the wealthy won't end up uh, uh, paying any less uh, because he's going to eliminate uh, deductions. So he's naturally asked the, 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 the follow-up anybody would ask, okay, uh, Mr. Romney, what are the deductions? So I'm asking you, Mr. Well, Rizzi, be... what are the, well, what, what do you suppose to... the deductions are? Well, the deductions would have, that he would have to eliminate are quite sweeping. He has to find $500 billion uh, in, in corporate tax breaks and individual deductions and credits to make that work, which means he has to go after cherished, you know, middle-class tax advantages like interest deductibility in the United States on mortgages. And, you know, as a consequence, uh, a lot of middle-class Americans would likely face a tax increase. Uh, the United States uh, has a terrible tax structure. Uh, not the wealthiest, but fairly wealthy Americans, people making more than $250,000 a year, who don't make their money on Wall Street, but rather, you know, have businesses or are successful professionals, are paying 25 to 30 percent of their income in taxes, double what Mitt Romney pays and also Mr. Obama's friends like, uh, you know, the famous investors and so forth that he likes to, to uh, associate with, Warren Buffett. Uh, we really need to have a system where everybody pays something and it's flatter. And that's the direction Mr. Romney would take us in. However, it's going to be very painful because somewhere he has to come up with the money. A flat tax would raise taxes on people that pay no taxes at all today or people that pay very few taxes, and that includes a lot of people that, that you mentioned, like the waitress and so forth. Uh, in order to have a reasonable tax structure, people have to start paying for their government. If Obama pushes the idea that Mitt Romney has a hidden agenda, won't tell you what his plans are, and then Mitt Romney won't tell you what those deductions are uh, that are going to be eliminated, doesn't politically Mitt Romney feed Obama's agenda? Absolutely. Mr. Romney is like a sparring partner, someone who has been engaged to look like an opponent, but who really can't inflict any damage on the, on the champion in the, in, in, the, in the practice ring. This more, looks more like a sparring session than a real heavyweight fight. Uh, Mr. Romney, um, while I'm sympathetic to some of the policies he would like to implement, is campaigning like a man well in over his head. He reminds me very much of Mr. Kerry, uh, you know, uh, when, when he ran against Mr. Clinton, uh, Governor, uh, Senator Kerry just was not a suitable, uh, excuse me, when he ran against Mr. Bush, he was just not a suitable opponent. So, Mr. Marizzi, when it comes to down the road, because somebody will win the November election, and uh, this uh, tax Mageddon, somebody will have to find a way to knock heads to avoid it. If tax Mageddon is not avoided, if the American economy does actually go over the cliff. Paint the picture for me. What does it look like? Well, it's going to be very tragic for the global economy, and it could actually disrupt the international institutions that we have. It's certainly Europe will plunge into recession with us, and the Chinese will discover that their export-driven growth model, in which they sell so much more than they buy from abroad, doesn't work. 
because eventually you bankrupt your customers that way, as much as Germany has bankrupt Greece. In that environment, the world plunges into a you know, long recession. Uh, it won't look like the Great Depression because the world is just structured differently than in those days. And at that point, organizations like the WTO come under attack. The IMF, which has been the shadow of any kind of reasonable institution for a very long time, the World Bank and so forth, and the real losers will be the poorest of the poor, the nations of the world that are small and struggling and don't have much leverage. The international system will break down, uh, will have protectionism, uh, the Americans can handle the world quite nicely uh, in a protected world because we can still provide for most of our needs if we choose to. You know, we could produce most of our domestic energy or in concert with the Canadians and it'll become, you know, some sort of fortress North America. The poor Canadians will have no choice but to come along. Just on the, the virtue of that we're so much larger. In, in the last seconds that we have left here, I wonder if you could just give it to me in 30 seconds or less. Regardless of what you think of both candidates, because I can tell you're not a fan of either, and that's what our, our viewers are seeing tonight, and that's fine. If you just want to avoid tax Mageddon, who's your pick? Well, I think you pick Romney. My feeling is that uh, with Mr. Romney, those tax cuts he talked about won't happen. Uh, when they look at what's involved, they'll get tied down in Congress. They'll just merely extend the Bush tax cuts for now, and we won't get tax Mageddon. The deficit will continue to be very large, and they'll start to focus on budget cutting. He'll get along well with Congress, much better than Mr. Obama does. You know, Mr. Obama has trouble getting along with a Democratic Congress. Unless he lets the left wing control, uh, you know, he really, he's not a man of compromise. Mr. Romney is. I think Mr. Romney would be the better president, you know, if I have to pick between the two. All right, so you don't think he's a great politician, but you think he's, he's, a, he's a superior CEO. Dr. Maurizio, thank you so much for the interview. Take Appreciate care. It. Dr. Peter Marizzi at the University of Maryland.